Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to implement a screen shake effect. And by the end of this tutorial, you should have something like this, where we can activate the screen shake effect, and it will obviously fade out over time. But getting right into this, you can see I have a shake camera scene, and I'm going to just remove this because we're going to create our own node. So let's just delete this here. I'm going to add a new node at the top, and this is going to be a camera 2D. I'm going to rename this to shake camera, and we're going to save it in a new folder. I'm just going to call it new folder and now we can attach a script to it. So we're going to click on the new script button, save it in that same folder and let's get started with the code. So we're first going to define a few properties for how the camera is actually going to behave. So the first one's going to be an export var. This is going to be called decay. It's going to be a float and we're going to set it to 0.8 initially. Next up, we'll have another export variable. This one's going to be the maximum offset that we can apply to the camera. So this one's going to be a vector two, and we're going to set it equal to a new vector two. And let's set the properties of this one to 100 on the X and 75 on the Y. The next export variable is going to be called export var, and then it will be the maximum roll. So this is the maximum amount of rotation that we can apply to the camera. So this is going to be a float as well, and we're just going to set it equal to 0.1. And now lastly, let's just make a variable, I'll export it, and this is going to be called the follow node. And we're just going to set this equal to a node 2D, and this will essentially be able to get assigned to an object, and our camera is going to follow that object so that we don't have to nest this camera under a specific node. Now let's make two variables here. The first one is going to be var trauma. This one's going to be a float and we'll set it to 0, 0.0 to start. This is going to be like the live trauma variable, which will basically equate to how much shake is being applied to the camera. The next one is going to be var trauma underscore power. This one's going to be an int and we're going to set it to two. And this is essentially going to be the exponent of our trauma. So a higher value is going to give us more screen shake. So let's next add the shake function. So we're going to go down a bit and say function shake. And this is going to return void. So we can just type that there. But inside of here, we're going to first define an amount variable. And this will be equal to the power of trauma. And then we're going to raise it by trauma power. So now we have our amount. And now we can apply that amount to our x position, y position, and rotation. So the first line is going to be our rotation. So we're going to say rotation is equal to max roll. And then we're going to multiply this by our amount. And then we're also going to multiply this by a random number. So to do that, I'm going to call rand f range. And the first number is going to be negative one. And then we're going to do a range from negative one to positive one. We're next going to duplicate this line a couple times. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing, go down and paste it twice. And we're basically just going to change the values here. So instead of assigning rotation, we're going to assign our offset dot x. And we're going to set it equal to our maximum offset dot x multiplied by amount multiplied by our random range. And then we're also going to do the same thing with our offset dot y. Set this equal to our maximum offset dot y multiplied by amount multiplied by that random number as well. We'll next need to actually call the shake function. So we're going to do that inside of process. We're going to type function underscore process. And inside of here, we just first check if we have a follow node. So if there's a follow node assigned, we're going to set our global position equal to the global position of the follow node. So follow node dot global position. After we check with this if statement, we're going to type another one. This one will be if trauma. So if we have a trauma value, then we're going to say trauma is equal to max, which will take the maximum between two different values, trauma minus decay multiplied by delta so that we sync it to the frame rate. And then we're also going to put zero in here so that our trauma is going to be capped correctly. And then after we set our trauma, we can simply call the shake function. And this is going to use that trauma value to apply the rotation and the offset. So now the shake is going to work if we have a trauma value, but we next need a function to actually create that trauma on the camera. So let's make another new function. I'm going to put it right down here. This one's going to be called function add underscore trauma. And this is the function that we want to call from other nodes or anything that wants to add screen shake to the game. And inside of here, we're going to require an amount, which will just be a float. And inside of here, you can just pass in a value between zero and one. 
but this will return void and we're just going to do one line inside of this function and that's going to be setting trauma equal to the minimum value between trauma plus amount and 1.0. So just keep in mind that anything above one is going to basically be capped at one. I find that anything between like 0 0.05 and 0 0.2 are pretty balanced for adding just a bit of screen shake. And if you want to go a bit more overkill, you can add like 0.5 and that's going to shake the camera a lot more. We next need two helper functions to actually use this logic in our example. So first of all, I'm going to call the ready function. And inside of here, all we're going to do is call randomize. And this is essentially because we're using the random range function. We just want to randomize the game seed before we start so that we aren't doing the same exact shake every time. And then we're also going to define the input function. So we're saying function underscore input. And I'm just going to say if event is input event key and the event is pressed and the event dot key code is equal to key and we're going to do the space key so that's a kind of longer line i'm going to zoom out here and then if that's the case we're simply going to use that add trauma function that we just created so we're just adding some screen shake and the amount let's do like 0.4 for now now if i save this and then go back to my main scene i'm just going to re-instance this shake camera make sure i have everything i want in the view and now we'll just go ahead and run this and if i press the space key We'll add a bit of screen shake and stacking it on top of itself. We'll add a ton of screen shake. It'll always be capped at that maximum offset and rotation. Now, again, if you want slightly different behavior, you can edit the properties, which we've exported. So if you want a longer decay or a larger maximum offset, or maybe you want to add a bit more rotation, you can do that as well. And then by simply assigning the follow node. So let's say we wanted to follow this sprite, then it will basically move the camera so it's always targeting that node. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you want to grab the code directly from the project, it is on GitHub, so you can just click the link in the description and it'll take you right there. There's also some other various links down there, which I would highly recommend you check out. But thanks for watching the video and I hope you learned something new. If you did, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as it is free and it does help the channel out a ton. Anyways though, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.